person that you saw raise the gun and shoot at you, did you, looking back then now, what was your impression of um, his use of the firearm, if anything? Your Honor, I'm, I'm going to object to that question. She, she's already testified she's not very familiar with firearms. I think that she would be speculating about his use at this time. Your Honor, I, I do want to acknowledge she's testified twice before, so I, I do know, I'm, I'm trying to, this is difficult. She, even though it's her third time, it's very hard for her, and so I'm trying to get her to um, answer my questions. Um, so <clears throat> we'll describe uh, yeah. what, what you noticed about him. Um, his feet were um, about hip distance apart. His shoulders were square, um, and he raised raised that gun right up. Um, it was probably a second from the moment that I locked eyes with him. Okay, just for the record, you're uh, raising your arm at, at um, a um, shoulder level. Was it two arms or one? I don't I don't know. I I just remember seeing the one arm, and my body instinctually moved. Okay, so. After you tied the tourniquet, mm -hmm. um, what what did you do? Were you hearing any announcements? Did you did you have a phone with you? Did you have a way of communicating with anyone? Um, I had my cell phone. Uh, there was, the thing that I know to do is to barricade and listen. So I'm trying to figure out what to do next. I know that if we're in lockdown, 911's been called. I, there's a phone on that desk, but if I reach for it and he's there, he'll see me. Um, and then I'm worried about uh, what's happening in the front office. Um, I did, so I don't want to call up there. Um, and I text my husband. Um, I love you, active shooter. Within a few... Did, did you let anyone know that you had been shot? No, not at that point. Um, within a few minutes, I received a text message from my daughter who went to school in a neighboring district. Through social media, she had heard that there was an active shooter at Oxford High School. Um, she said, Mom, are you okay? And I said, I'm sheltered in place. I'm safe. And I love you. Um, and I'm just listening to what's happening outside, trying to distinguish what, what's my next move. What are you hearing? Absolute silence. I'm hearing nothing. Were there any announcements? Uh, there was a, another announcement that came on at one point, and it was to remain in lockdown. Um, I'm, there's a hallway text thread that we have. That There's no one texting on that. But there, the teachers yes, in that hallway, in the hallway have a, a group text? Yes. Okay. Um, no one's texting on that. But in the other part of the building, my language arts team says, um, I'm, I'm, I, I'm hearing there's an active shooter. And I said, I saw one. Um, did you I, say, and I've been shot? I, I did not say that I was shot. Um, okay, is there a reason you're not telling anybody that you've been shot? Is that because you didn't want to really understand it or... I, do, I think that there's definitely a part of me that um, was in denial about what was happening t in that moment. I also think that um, what I know is that building has to be secured to save the most amount of lives. And telling anyone that I'm shot when I'm not, when I do not need help, is not beneficial. So you didn't want anyone to help you? I was not. I did not need emergency medical attention at that moment. Or at least that's what I felt. Okay. okay. Uh, how long do you think you were in that classroom behind that cabinet? Um, I'm in there for about, I would say, 20 minutes. 
um, and I'm sitting on my bum. Um, and at one point I hear footsteps in the hallway because my back's facing that hallway. And I think they're starting to evacuate those rooms. That was the decision, that was the moment I decided to text the teacher next door to me. She's in room 222. And I just said, um, uh, no one, no one knows right now, but I've been, sh I think I used the word hit, I've been hit in the arm. Um, and then I did say, I, I hope there's no one else. Um, she then um, alerted, I, th I believe she called 911 and there was another teacher in the room with her and he alerted the front office. So at some point did you, did somebody come to try to um, help you? Uh, it was pretty quickly after I sent a text message to them that um, Kurt News, who was our assistant principal at the, at the time, that he shows up at my door knocking, um, Molly, Molly, are you in there? Um, and from behind that, that filing cabinet, I, I said, yes. Um, Kurt was, I've known Kurt since I started in Oxford, but I didn't trust that that was Kurt in that moment. Um, so you didn't want to open the door? I did not want to open the door. It felt safer to stay in there. Um, and then a few seconds after, there's uh, police officers at the door and uh, they're like, Is, are, are you injured? And I, I said, yes. Um, and so they asked me to, uh, I think I said, do you want me to, I kind of like crawled out from behind and um, I was like, do you want me to, do you want me to take the night lock out? Um, and they said, yes. Do you want me to open the door? And they said, yes. And I, I'm still on my hands and knees at this point. And they reach up for the handle. Um, and that door swings open. And they grab me from under my arms. And they pull me up and out of the classroom. And I can see Kurt standing on the lockers, like a, um, against the lockers. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been admitted as Exhibit 11. What is that, Molly? Uh, that's them at my door. And that's them walking me out. You can see that, uh, there were multiple police that were around that door when they pulled me out. Um, and then the two escort me out door four. Um, we get outside of door four and the one says, I'm gonna put a, a real tourniquet on you now. Um, it might hurt a bit. And then- Is, is that what's happening right through the window you can see in the yes. video. Okay. And then they said, we're gonna call um, and see if there's an ambulance available for you. Uh, we need to know, we need to know if uh, someone needs it more than you. Okay, when you came out, you, you see, we see somebody there, um, an officer with a, a, a weapon. Mm -hmm. um, did, were there anybody else? Was there anybody else in the hallway? Were there any students? There, there was no one in the hallway. It was completely silent, with the exception of a walkie or two that was going off. And what information did you have at that point about the shooter? Or did you know somebody, if they're, they're still in the building, did you know if there were victims? What did you know? I have no idea about anything. But when he says, we're going to see if there's someone else, I think it was the moment that I knew that there was someone else. Okay. When you got outside, what did you see or hear? Um, there's a helicopter flying above the building. Um, there's a couple snowbanks. Did you see any students? There were a smattering of people throughout the parking lot. I honestly couldn't tell you if they were students or parents. Okay. Um, 
eventually, did you get into an ambulance? I did. And where did where were you taken? I was taken a little pier um, hospital, or the hospital up here. Okay. And what happened when you got there? Um, we got to the pier, and um, I asked to walk in. Um, I felt like if I could walk, I wanted to walk. And so uh, they supported me to walk me into the hospital. And as I'm walking in, the hallways are lined with doctors and nurses. Like, they were, they were prepared for a disaster. Okay. What did you learn about your injury that day? <laughs> um, it was through and through. Um, it was clean. They ended up doing a, a chest x-ray on me in the hospital to make sure that no debris from the bullet came in. And that was probably the first moment that I cried because it felt like I had made a mistake in the classroom. And then I had actually put my life in danger. I didn't know if I was hit somewhere else. What, what, what do you mean you thought you made a mistake? I didn't know if I was hit somewhere else. I couldn't understand why they were doing a chest x-ray on me. Okay. Were you released that day? I was. Um, my husband came up to the hospital to come get me. Um, we went home that night. Okay. Uh, at some point, were you informed or shown where those shots landed? Yeah. Um, He was aiming to kill me. Um, those shots were intended. Okay. I want to mm -hmm. back up. When did you learn where those shots landed other than you knew it hit your arm? Uh, my husband was my nurse at home, taking care, um, cleaning my wound. Um, and at some point when, you know, I'm holding him out, I, I realized... Uh, that's a heart level. Um, and he was even. <coughs> okay. How many inches is it from your heart, Molly? I would say about six. Okay. At some point, were you shown the picture of your door that depicted? Okay. Yeah. Do you remember when that was? Yeah. Um, I saw that photo um, in your office. Okay. When you came in months ago to talk mm -hmm. about the testimony. All right, Molly, um, I'm showing you what's been in Minna's Exhibit 12. Um, is that the classroom, your classroom door? It is. Okay. And the the pink uh, rods, do you know what those indicate? The bullets that came through the door. Okay. And when you saw that in my office, what did you say? He was aiming to kill me. That's a shot to the head and to the chest. Ask you to tell the jury what Alice is. Oh, th thank you. Um, Alice is a protocol that we follow. I, if I could remember the entire acronym, I would um, tell you, but it's like um, we have to listen and make alert. We have to make a decision. Are we going to lock down in place? Are we going to flee the scene? Or are we going to have to go on the attack uh, that like someone would come in the room? Um, so it's just kind of dependent upon the situation and what decision we choose to make um, in, a, in a situation like that.